is okay. All right, so let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Madeline Island School of the Arts. My name is Annie Sumner, and I am going to be the host today on this one-hour webinar that we are joined with four international sketchers from all over the world. Um, I'm excited to announce this fabulous workshop that these four instructors are going to be joining with us this summer on Madeline Island on Lake Superior in Wisconsin. Um, before I start uh, introducing everyone, I just want to let everyone know where Madeline Island is and what Madeline Island is all about. Madeline Island School of the Arts is all about. We are located just north of the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, up on the beautiful shoreline of Lake Superior. Madeline Island is about a four hour drive from Minneapolis Airport, International Airport, and about a two hour drive from the Duluth Airport. Um, once you arrive in this iconic um, port town of Bayfield, you'll then get on a ferry boat and travel across to Madeline Island. When you arrive at Madeline Island, nothing else matters except for you to be there, to be on this wonderful island um, at a retreat with Madeline Island School of the Arts. And we are lucky enough to have these four international instructors traveling all the way there this summer to join us for this week-long workshop. Let me just start by introducing who we have with us today. I'm sure everyone is already familiar with them. Uh, we have Jane Blundell. Wave, Jane. Hi, Jane Blundell, all the way from Sydney, Australia. Jane is going to tell us what time it is there when she gets on her camera and starts to talk. We have Nina Johansson. She's wonderful. Say hi, Nina. Thank you from Stockholm, Sweden, joining us. It looks dark there. I wonder if it's late. Um, we have Edward Bizek, and he is joining us from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have Oliver Huller. <laughs> <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, Perfect. Yeah. How was it, Oliver? Was it good? Perfect. Perfect. I hope so. I hope you liked it. We've been working on these last names for about 30 minutes prior to this webinar. So I'm so glad I just nailed it. Anyway, like I said, these guys have joined us from all over the world. And if I could tell you how we scheduled a webinar like this, just so we could time it with everyone getting up at the right time and being able to be on this webinar, it's amazing. And of the 129 people right now that have joined us for this webinar, you are not going to miss this. This is going to be fantastic. Um, each one of these instructors is going to take about 10 minutes to talk about their techniques, to show some of their work, and also just to give you an idea of what their teaching styles are. So when you join us for this retreat on the island, you will know exactly what to expect. Um, it's a different <laughs> type of workshop that we'll be doing with these four instructors. Each day over this five-day retreat, you'll get to spend one day specifically with a small group of you and the instructor spending the whole day from nine to four with a subject, learning all about his or her technique and, and using their instruction to make your work even better. So it's an, an amazing opportunity and I don't wanna sit here talking about it anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to these guys um, and let them know exactly what to expect when you join us for this retreat in July, July 8th to the 12th, 2024 on Madeline Island. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to our wonderful Jane Blundell in Sydney, Australia. Jane, take it away. Thank you. All right. Now, I, um, I have been sketching and painting and drawing since I was a child. So it's something I've always done. And uh, the first time I remember actually working from life, I think I was 11. And I remember trying to draw ducks in a pond and struggling with working from life. Um, but I got there and it's something I've been doing ever since. So wherever I can, I do my drawings and paintings working from life. Um, but I also love working from things like flowers and, and found objects because they can be sitting in front of me. So I do a lot of work in sketchbooks, which I'll show you, but I also do some big paintings as well. So I'll start with some of the sketchbook books because often the sketches lead to um, the paintings. So I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it. So hopefully you can see my sketchbook now. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Yep. There we go, Jane. Super. Okay. 
So what I like to do sometimes is sometimes I like to just wander around the market. So this is in a market, this is in, in Montreal, and just sketching little things as I stand there or sit um, around the market. And then sometimes I'll buy something. So I love the gourds and so on that you get in, in the US in, in autumn. So this is a turban squash that I painted, I, I bought and took back and painted from life. Um, then there's things like this with some other gourds that I painted sitting in a bowl and just, um, you know, just enjoying. So these sorts of subjects, the found objects that you can sit and look at and actually look around the corner. Um, working from life compared to a photo, you can really understand the subject and see how these little bumps relate to each other. So this is one of many sketchbooks. Um, and I'll just show you some of the most applicable because what I'll be teaching in Madeline Island is, is the flowers and trees, um, but particularly flowers and found objects and smaller things with an emphasis on color. Sometimes I work with a pen first and then watercolor. Sometimes I work with pencil and usually I'll work with a fairly limited range of colors. So for example, I might only use three colors to create all the colors that I need. And so I'll be talking a lot about color and color mixing and how to create the colors that you want for really good color harmony. So these sketchbooks, um, everyone likes to know about uh, types. These sketchbooks are a um, uh, 200 GSM paper, and you can see some of these other drawings in it. It's, um, it's a cotton paper, and it's actually um, the Artistico. Um, so it's a, it's a really lovely paper, and it, we're really nice for, for working on location. I I'm, sometimes will go traveling and take a sketchbook with me. So this is in uh, an area in Australia. So this is going through a beautiful national park and I just sit there and draw. So this one's with a, with a black or gray pen and this one's using a brown pen. I'll bring them in a bit closer. I love detail. Um, so you can see um, mm. the rocks and so on as I was just sitting there drawing it in a very peaceful sort of area. Um, these ones are just standing in botanical gardens and just drawing the various shapes, things that I found on the ground, a leaf that I found just walking down the street. I love doing leaves. Um, and then some other found objects, just really interesting studies uh, on the page. I do landscapes, I do um, urban sketching as well, but I thought I'd just focus on, on these natural objects for this one. This was in the US, I was teaching a workshop on, um, on exactly this sort of subject. We had a wonderful collection of gourds and so on. And all of these are done from life, just building up the colors as, as they go. Um, and the same, so I'm trying to stick with the ones that are most appropriate. <laughs> I, I love these subjects. I love the autumn in the US. This is another, series in cans. So once again, set in a botanic garden. And I'll, and I'll find subjects and just try drawing them out in, in different sorts of ways. Sometimes there's a little uh, moth or a, or a beetle or whatever else that I'll put onto the page. You'll see that little guy there. Um, and more of these amazing leaves that I've found all over the place. I love the slipper orchids. So I'll just wander around and, and choose different subjects. These are these beautiful um, fig trees. We get a lot of fig trees in Australia. And this is a massive stand of trees. It's, it's probably, I don't know, eight feet across, all the way across here. And I just sat um, in the park um, and this wonderful Indigenous lady came and sat with me and we just chatted while I was drawing away. And sometimes it's another found sort of object. This one's some, some turmeric that one of the students had brought in. And this is a bit of sugar cane because at the time I was there, they were burning the sugar cane. So there's sort of a collection of, of things in, in each of these sorts of sketches. Um, see which ones are relevant. Jane, how long do you typically spend? Uh, uh, Joey Sarna is asking, how long do you spend on a sketch at each location? Yeah, that's a good question. I am not a fast sketcher. I love the detail and I like to take my time. So something like this, I've probably sat there for two hours. So that's pretty standard. When I go out and take the sketchbook, I'll expect to be there for a while. So I don't get much done in five minutes um, because I really like to zoom in and really, um, you know, look at the details. 
So this is done from life, but probably over about um, two hours and using a fountain pen, which is what I tend to work with. So yes, I'm not I'm not a fast sketcher, but I'm I'm kind of I'm a realist. I mean, if you just look at any of these things, they're all um, I'm always looking for reality. And I need to show just one of my home city because I'm from Sydney. And I'm coming to you from the future, so it's tomorrow. <laughs> it's uh, 7 in the morning here tomorrow, um, so I think that's kind of fun. So that's, that's my city of Sydney and the Opera House. Um, I always i am mad about colour. So at the beginning of every sketchbook, I will always um, paint out all the colours that are in whatever palette I'm using and usually include a couple of other ones that I just think are really fun. Because then when someone says, you know, what colour is that? I can say, well, it's this one, okay. It's cerulean chromium or it's transparent um, viral orange or whatever it is and show them what they look like. There's a, you can't help but teach when you've always taught. Um, these are, I have a whole series of these sketchbooks. So this is number three of this particular type. But I think it's about number 80 or 85 of, of the sketchbooks that I've kept over the years. I also like to work with, so I love natural subjects. Um, so these ones were done in South Africa last year. And these were, um, as I was just wandering around, I found this, this sort of um, aloe flower over and over again. So I drew the top of it and then the bottom of it because it, it was too long to fit on the paper. Um, but I also drew some of the animals. Um, now, some of the animals, it's pretty hard to do from life. So some of these I had to do from photos. So, you know, you can't, you can't always work from life, even though that's my preference. Um, but these are some of the other subjects that I've done. So I really specialise in, in the natural world, whether it's plants or animals. Um, though I love doing buildings as well. And I love stones and rocks and found objects and, and these sorts of things. And if I'm sketching and something falls on my lap, I'll nearly always just draw it as part of the sketch. So I'll be working with colour and with, where's the Opera House again? <laughs> I love that building and it was 50 this year. So it's very, very iconic. Um, so yes, I'll be working with um, showing colour and how to work with colour and how to work with limited colour and how to really build up natural objects, just looking directly at the flower or the plant or the leaf or whatever um, to, to show how you can present those and, and sketch them. And I tend to work with either pencil or water-soluble pencil or um, pen as a drawing and then watercolour over the top or sometimes the other way around. So that's a bit of an overview. Um, and then you have some of the big paintings. So while I do a lot of sketchbook work, I also do large paintings and I've been um, an exhibiting artist for, for decades. <laughs> so you might like to show those. And I won't know what you're showing. <laughs> There we so, go. Well, okay, so this is this is a massive, massive plant. It's a gymnia lily. Um, this is a full sheet of watercolor paper, just to give you a sense of scale. And these things grow um, up to ten meters tall. That's like thirty feet. They're absolutely huge. Uh, I've done many, many paintings of these, and I just adore them. So that's a gymnia lily, also known as Dorianthus at Salsa. And next one. This is fairly recent. This is my favourite tree. I've drawn and painted this since I was about 17. It's a massive fig tree in the Botanic Garden. And this one's done very tonally. Actually, it's, it's sitting behind me as a print. Um, once again, it's a full sheet of watercolour paint, paper and it's done in ink and watercolour. This one is a lotus. It's also a full sheet. So this is done from a photo, but um, most of these large ones are worked from photos. Um, I, love, I love painting flowers. This one's um, leaf litter. So I quite often look, like to look not just at the fresh new growth, but also the decay or rust and other things as well, which I know Nina loves too. So this is leaf litter. This was a big one taken from, once again, from a photo. This is called Red Cadenza, and it was just a mass of flowers. So it's a kind of the idea of the cadenza of, the, of music is the flashy piece and the flower of a plant is its showpiece. Uh, this is a tree uh, in, in, it's a snow gum. So it was originally sketched from life and then I worked up into great big painting. I've actually done this a few times because I love this tree. 
and this is in Cairns, and this is a, um, a river rocks. So this is another full sheet of watercolour paper and just painted little by little over a period of about 200 hours. Wow. So that's some of what I do, and I look forward to working with you in July. Thank you so much, Jane. Someone asked um, in one of the questions, does most of the instruction happen outdoors? Um, I can speak on how Madeline Island School of the Art works, um, and then perhaps maybe you can speak how you typically approach teaching your your workshops. Um, Madeline Island is a, is a small island, um, and so everything is pretty localized, <laughs> close by. Um, when we do these workshops with multiple instructors, we can um, offer box lunches and bring box lunches to you on location. If indeed that's something you want to be on location for the whole day, we offer box lunches. We do off also um, have indoor studio space in case of inclement weather. Um, and we also do serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner on uh, on our campus as well. All meals are included during your retreat. But go ahead, Jane, You, I'll pass that question on to you and, and de definitely let us know how you typically approach your workshops. Okay, I, look, it depends on the circumstances. So I've done workshops that are fully indoors. Um, I've also done workshops that are fully out. So what we would tend to do, because we're looking at the, at the um, natural environment, we will probably be working some of the time indoors to learn about the colour and they understand colour mixing. And we'll also work outdoors to actually draw things in location. But we may well be able to pick things or bring things in to work indoors as well. So there'll be a bit of indoors and there'll be a bit of outdoors. And so you do need to have some sort of seat um, to, to just be comfortable. Um, but we, you know, you, you have a hat and you have you know, whatever you need to be outdoors in the, in the weather. Super. Wonderful. Jane, your work is wonderful and it's beautiful. And thank you so much for taking the time to share it with you. I'm going to move on. Um, are you finished or is? can we move on to the next instructor? Sure. All right. I'm going to pass it on to Nina all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, she is renowned for her dedication to... Um, on location sketching, um, she has a special knack for capturing the beauty of everyday life in urban environments. I give you Nina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here. <clears throat> Super nice to join this. <clears throat> um, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd uh, should I start sharing the sketchbook immediately or? You can do it. Yeah, we can go right into the sketchbook yeah. for you. And and you can talk about all different. Um, do you want to go ahead and, and put your. Uh, how is Matt? Oh, here we go. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> Good. Uh, what are we yes. looking at here? We are looking at a bunch of sketchbooks. Um, so typically, not all my <laughs> sketchbooks are the same size or brand, but many of them are. And to tell them apart I look for stickers everywhere just put them on on the front so I know which one's which uh -huh. and that's my way of of telling them apart anyway I thought I'd, I'd talk a little bit about my sketching habit maybe uh I typically work in sketchbooks and uh oh sorry about that so um and I I see the books as they, they turn into sort of a diary of sorts, but not the very private kind. But this is where I look. If I'm wondering next summer where I was this summer, I'll probably bring out the sketchbook and check. So um, so it's like a calendar diary sort of thing. Um, and as she said, I like drawing uh, everyday life. And I... For my day job, I teach graphic design and drawing, sketching techniques and all at university level. And uh, there are so many tricks in sketching that you can use also for illustration. And uh, I use them all the time. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about that. And at the end, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what I'll be teaching at Madeline Island. Um, so for drawing, 
traveling is great. We all know it's so much fun to travel and everything you see is new. For me, Chicago was great. I was there at the Urban Sketches uh, Symposium in 2017 and uh, high rises, that's kind of, I mean, there are some tall buildings in Stockholm, but it's a joke compared to Chicago. So uh, that was really interesting for me. Everything is like so big. How do you even take it in? How do I even catch and catch this on my pages? So that was a challenge, but a lot of fun. And also like the L train in the streets and capturing people moving about. And always traveling is like everything is new to your eyes. So it's kind of super interesting to just sit anywhere. This is Manchester. Um the canals in England. I was kind of blown away when I started to realize the history of the canals in England. I was like, wow. Um, so I drew this and concentrated on the canal and the boats and the rest is left as it is. So traveling is nice, right? So beautiful views, new things. Uh, everything is sketchable and fun to examine with a pen in hand. Um, but I sort of like the everyday life. I don't have to go anywhere. The sketching makes it interesting. Anyway, this is my street where I live. My actual windows are not in this image because I live at the other end of the street. But anyway, um, it's nice to just, I just went out the door and plopped myself down uh, uh, maybe 100 meters from home and sat there drawing and I met some new neighbors that I never met before. So that's kind of nice. Um, also walking around the neighborhood, uh, the buildings, it's kind of an older suburb close to the city where I live. And it is nice to, well, walk around in the streets and draw that, but it's also nice to, I walked past the villa and the guy had a moped, a really old moped in his garden. So I asked if it was okay <laughs> to draw, and it was. So I got to know some new people in the neighborhood. So it's always nice. Um, we grow potatoes from midsummer on our balcony. So I draw those every year because it's good fun. This is the whole um, shebang. This is all we get <laughs> from our little growing. But it's okay for a midsummer lunch. And I also like building sites. This is right next to where we live. They built a new school, but from the beginning, it was just a hole in the ground with a crane in it. So it's like, I think it's kind of interesting to just record what I see, what I live in, what it, what is all around us, no matter where I go. I mean, Chicago was nice and all, but um, just next block is also nice. So yeah, the laundry room is good too. Um, uh, fika, as we say in, in Sweden, coffee with friends, um, is good as well. Uh, just drawing together for a while. A journey, not that far, but within Sweden, and drawing in the car, not while driving, obviously. And also, uh, things like objects, I like that as well. Just this little bird and the brio dog that's uh that's me just trying to turn an object over and draw it from several angles just to sort of examine it um as if it was animated only i'm not animating i'm drawing on a page but to try uh how to do that um old objects i like old and dilapidated things. This is actually the camera we had when I grew up and we found it in my mom's flat and uh, it was interesting because that little infrared filter uh, was on the camera and I was the last one who <clears throat> used it and I think I was 23 when I did. So it's been lying like this in a cupboard in my mom's flat <laughs> with that little filter on it. I think that's kind of lovely. Uh, this is the camera I learned photography with, so that's interesting. The view out the kitchen window, uh, which is interesting, not just because it's kind of pretty with a snowfall, but the 
the colors change. Every morning I look at the kitchen window, the colors are different. Um, some days they're super yellow and warm. And on a day like this, when the sky is gray and it's snowing, all the color disappears. The most, the strongest colors in the, is on that red house up in the left corner. And actually those are dark red, very strong color normal on normal days. So it's kind of interesting to examine things. I've drawn this view a million times and it looks different every time. So it's kind of, that's kind of fun. Uh, winter sketching is also uh, a bit of a challenge and I have to change my tools. As you can see, like my normal tools are a black fine liner or a fountain pen and watercolors or a gray fine liner and watercolors. Uh, but when it's snowing and it's too cold, I I switch because I have to wear mittens, thick mittens, because my fingers get too cold. I can't even hold a pen. Uh, and then I have to switch. So I use a pencil instead and preferably a carpenter's pencil because with mittens, that's easier to hold. So yeah. the left image here is from my hometown where I grew up in Umeå in northern Sweden. And the right one is from this New Year's. Uh, we went to the west of Sweden to visit my in-laws. And I did some drawing in the snow and watercolor. So, uh, and that's Nina, also a challenge. Yeah. Nina, so, I, have a, I have a question um, yeah? from someone. Would love to hear your thoughts or advice on sketching from imagination. Do you do that? You were mentioning I that. I do. Yeah, I do. Um, I haven't included those images here yeah. because this is more about the, the retreat this summer, but I do sketch from imagination. And I started doing that because I felt like I don't have any imagination anymore because I always draw from it, from observation. Uh -huh. So I took, that was actually really effective. I took a calendar with a day per, a, a page per day, sorry. And I drew just a small one, very small. And I drew something from imagination every day for one year, which was kind of, uh, it took a little bit of time every evening. But after about like three weeks, it started to, I don't know, the wheels started spinning in my brain. And, it, you know, the ideas come along and yeah, it gets easier. It's sort of like, exercising you have to sort of do it at least i did uh, i'm going to interrupt so I, you sorry for sorry? anyone watch for anyone watching um please look at nina's instagram because those drawings are fantastic and she does inktober every yep. october and more of these imaginary drawings and they are just an absolute joy thank you jane um mm. yeah so i do them the, nowadays, I usually do them in October because it's a great, um, it's a challenge every day in October. So, but just start and try it and don't give up because at least my brain was pretty slow in the beginning. So anyway, winter sketching is cool too, but I have to draw fast and change my tools because otherwise my fingers freeze. I also enjoy uh, botanical sketching. I used to teach a course at uni in uh, scientific illustration, which meant botanicals, insects, history. We did a lot of different like sorts of uh, science. And uh, botanicals are super fun. It's enough to just go out on the balcony here or <clears throat> out in the garden below to just draw some. It's amazing to plants um so yeah everyday life and the stuff that you have around you uh is my main interest i think for sketching um also i like to visit places i like to uh, have a place where i can come and go and sketch many times which is really um fun and this is actually right here where we live it's an old like a vintage garage where um, retired firemen repair retired fire trucks. 
uh, vintage cars. So it's really fun and they're really inviting and welcoming. So I've been there like, I'm sure 10, 15 times to, to draw their old vehicles and tools and themselves. And it's been really cool. And so I intend to go back there some more at some point. Um, and because I got into cars here, I traveled also several times to this old car cemetery. I know some people have seen these before. It's like a forest which is filled with like 1,000 cars from 1950s to 1980s, about. Uh, and it's it gets really eerie there. The the it's kind of strange with these old cars just rusting away, and then nature is kind of taken over. You have trees growing out of windows of cars, and if you sit still on a little stool, you get to see like little birds fly in and out of these old carcasses, and they have their nests in there. And little mice run around because you sit still. You're not a threat to small animals if you just sit still and it's really interesting so yeah this is good fun also it's kind of a challenge to capture it's hard enough to capture cars and then when they look all screwed up like this it's even harder because it looks like you draw something wrong but yeah they have some sometimes half crashed and half you know people have picked parts from them to their own cars so very cool. Anyway, um, and also Stockholm. And this is kind of getting closer to the subject of uh, Bayfield, where my part of the workshop will be. We'll get the ferry over to Bayfield and work there. So Stockholm is a city of islands and lots of water. And of course, I draw a lot here. I don't have that many pictures from here in here but it's it's a really pretty city if you want to but i sort of like the other views more i mean it's nice with the nice buildings and all that but so this is the bridge that i use to get home if i bike to to the train station it's long <laughs> and it's windy and it's uh boring to cycle over but it's kind of fun to draw from from afar also, this church is a bit of a landmark, and landmarks are cool too. But this is even more interesting to me because they were renovating it. So all that stuff in front of it, that's kind of um, made me want to sit there for an hour and capture it because it's so unreal. It's it, it's usually so pretty there. But when, when all that stuff is in the way, it's kind of more interesting, I think. So I like to capture things that are changing or things that are on the way of, yeah, people are either tearing it down or rebuilding or something. This is an old prison, which is now a hostel, I think. Um, yeah, and so the water is always near. You can capture boats just about anywhere in town, <clears throat> but... You can see it at a distance or you can be really close. And I'm thinking that might be something we want to try in Bayfield as well, to be close to the water or to be like more in the uh, in the town or among the shops or wherever um, to capture some hopefully everyday life there as well. Um, you can do detailed like sort of a portrait of a boat or a house or whatever, or or you can try to capture life, people doing things. Um, Nina. Which has, it's also interesting, yes. Sorry, I just have another question from, yeah. uh, this goes for everyone, um, you know, uh, Jane and Oliver and Edward. Um, do you typically use um, pencil first and then put pen over that? I don't. I usually go for ink because it's faster and all my mistakes are in there. But as long as I don't give up, finish the image anyway, then I'm the one who sees them. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't mind actually. Uh, but it's much faster. I, 
maybe if I have like a commission or something that has to become mm. a great image, then my might bring out a pencil. But otherwise, pencil is cool as as a tool on its own, I think. But uh, usually when I'm sketching, I use uh, ink. And Jane, how about you? I usually, well, it varies, but I, if I'm doing a building, I usually do a very, um, a pencil sketch just to get the proportions, and then I go into ink. I don't draw it in pencil and then draw it in pen over the top, um, but the pencil can just help you to get it in the right place on the page, and then <coughs> pen. Nina, I, I want to just let you know it's been wonderful. I, I You have st still more pictures to go, but we have so many boats and so many I old know. cars yeah. on, <laughs> on the island. I just, I'm so, I'm so excited for you. Uh, it's just it's, sort of like, you know, it's the perfect place for you, I think. Some of these pictures if, of these port towns um, remind me of Bayfield so much. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled for you to get here to just see all sorts of subjects that you have in front of you. Yeah, it's great. Um, so I'm just going to flip over to, uh, because I can see the time is, is uh, moving ahead here. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm thinking this is what we're going to see which is a lot. And what do we do? Uh, we have to start by choosing a view. What do we do? A panorama, detail, zoomed in, overview. How do we start that? We're going to talk about image composition, how to begin, how to work from big to smaller details, choosing a focus and all that. And then, of course, the little conundrum of uh, fitting it all on the page. <laughs> um, which can be tricky and we have to simplify. So this is one of the, this is a, a, a good example where the mistakes are still in there. Can you see my cursor? Mm -hmm. Good. These guys, can you see it? Yes. I did, I did two starts on this boat <laughs> uh -huh. and it landed wrong every time because it didn't, you know, it didn't work with the perspective of the rocks or the stones. Uh, but the third time I got it right. And every time I show this to people and they're like, oh yeah, I can see it now. I didn't notice. So I think that you're mostly, it's mostly you yourself to see your mistake. And also the question of, do we have to finish it all? No, of course not. I mean, this building behind the boat was full of windows, but yeah. <clears throat> Can't draw all that. That's crazy. So a bit of simplification and then depth. And this is where I'll end. Uh, because I think image composition, we always talk about height and width, the surface. But I think you can also do some um, composition depth-wise in towards uh, the depth of the uh, image. So there's a lot of little tricks that a lot of illustrators use, I know, and they're not that hard to to get to grips with and start using. And you can exaggerate them, of course. So we'll go into that as well. And I always do a, a little handout because when you take a workshop, you always feel stressed and you try to do all the exercises and afterwards you forget half of it. So I usually just put together something that you can remember the key concepts by so thank you sorry for taking another thank time you. but it's fun to talk sketching it is it's wonderful to hear nina thank you so much and to see all those photos and like i said you know you are you are you're going to have more than enough subjects to find on the island on madeline and and we're looking forward to spending more time with you and seeing all of your creations we're going to keep moving on i do have some extra questions um I'm going to move on to uh, Oliver, um, all the way in Vienna from in Austria. He is joining us. And Oliver, go ahead and take it away. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Um, thanks for joining and for for watching us um, talk about sketching. And as you as you can tell, it's hard for us to stop. 
So <laughs> first, I have to apologize. First of all, I've got a little bit of a, of a cold, um, so I might be coughing occasionally. Um, it's not about you. It's, it's all about me. Um, if you have any questions, please um, put them out there straight away. The, less, the, the more interactive it is, the easier it is for me, and I'm not sort of I'm just talking into the void. I'd appreciate that. So I have been, I'm very interested and I've been for a long time interested in, in urban sketching. I really like to go outside. I feel like I draw when I go outside, I draw things that I wouldn't otherwise. Um, I go with a hunter's mindset outside, I have to say. I, I hunt for stories. I hunt for things that sort of um, excite me. So, and I usually bring a little bit of a humorous um sometimes humorous point of view to it. I like to be subjective in my sketching. I think this is the beauty. To me, this is the beauty of it, um, expressing yourself through your sketch and communicating your view of the world. Um, it, it, this is sort of what, what, what I really enjoy doing, the, the storytelling aspect that urban sketching provides and, and finding those little nuggets out there that I would never have drawn otherwise or I wouldn't have thought of. So what I want to do is I want to share some sketchbooks with you, um, flick through them and show you particularly some sketches and some concepts as they pertain to the workshop that we'll be doing in Madden Island. As I said, if there's any questions at any time, um, feel, free to, feel, free to, feel free to drop them and I'll answer them. I'll take you over to my little other stand. I hope you're not getting seasick. Let me just switch cameras over. Um, that's that. Try to make you ignore my mess. Oops. So there we go. Kind of. Now, what we're looking at here is actually one of the things. Is a sketchbook without? Your... Oh, it hasn't. Turn... It hasn't. Right. It hasn't. Okay. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Keeps happening. Okay. Anyway. There we go. So this is a sketchbook um, that I was keeping through the journey through Southeast Asia. And I'm quite happy um, in the end, it's sort of one of the, I like travel sketching. I like collecting those stories from on the road. As Nina said, you, you witness and you see with fresh eyes all the things that you wouldn't otherwise. And um, the essence of that sketchbook um, Won a prize in the end, so I'm happy to share that. Um, quite happy with that. Uh, the Canada Voyage and International Travel Sketchbook Fair prize in the international section. So let me show you some of the spreads from that journey. And what you see here is a, is a spread of Angkor Wat. And I have all these little scenes arranged into a sort of meshed up um, overarching image. And I, I quite like to do that a lot of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Either out of necessity because time is time is running, and you don't have enough time to do a large piece, or you don't feel like doing a large piece. And you know, I have a, a lot of times I have the family with me, so I don't have the time. Um, so it can be out of necessity, or it can also be out of intent. By using putting together many various aspects of one scene, you can create a richer and fuller experience. I think, and you, it's sort of you have one detail here and another detail here, and it's sort of. I think it it gets very close to how you actually experience the world around us. You know, we, we turn our head left and we turn it our head right and we sort of edit reality. So this is sort of the storytelling aspect by bringing things together and telling a story is what we'll be doing in, in Madeline Island in that in the workshop. Um, there's a lots of different lots of different things to think about in that context. Um, from a sketching perspective, from a design perspective, from a storytelling perspective. Let's see whether there's some others. No, there's some others, but it just dropped. Here's another example. This is sort of one um, mashup that has sort of a, a hero in the middle, a hero image that sort of then has, um, has some environment together. And it's all sort of speaks to the, to the, to the noise and the density of that place um at the time here is another another example and this is um in Gemma Elfna in Marrakesh it's the main square 
<clears throat> and what you'll see is there's a there's sort of a an establishing shot, and we'll get into the details in the workshop about the establishing shots and hero images and things like that. There's an establishing shot that gives you a sense of place, and then there's lots of little details that give you little aspects of that place at the time. And um, there's I'm using panels here, for example. Panels have some quite interesting characteristics in itself. First of all, they, they help you to contain information um, to give them appropriate space in your drawing. But as we are because we're primed from comics and graphic novels, they also immediately um, convey a sense of time. So when you look at that, you feel like your time is passing somehow. And so these sort of added dimension things in sketches, I, I'm really, I really like those. I like, I like to annotate on top. I like to make it as rich an experience as possible. And so this is sort of what we are, what we're going to do in Madeline Island. They have a, they have a wonderful museum that I learned about the history of Madeline Island from, um, from, from, from um, the time with the French and English and and um, Native Americans. So we'll have, we'll have lots to lots to dig out and sort of form an opinion and form a story that we that we want to tell. Um, so here is another example over here where we have where I have, where we, where I have a head of that woman that I drew on the bus at the time and then I didn't finish the head but sort of was fusing all that all, everything that was going on in the in the market in Marrakesh to her to the back of her head, sort of turning her turning her hair shape into a composite image of that market. And sort of this sort of again distills and condenses and, and condenses and make it makes it sort of a version of reality. It's not it is not reality, but it still speaks to the to the experience and it speaks to your to to what you wit what I witnessed on location. I like this sort of little bit of creative element in it as well. Are there any questions so far? Um, is, is anyone still there? How do, you, uh, <laughs> yeah. how do you choose your compositions? That's a question that someone's asking. Yeah, there's, um, there's a few tools and tips that I that I talk about and we'll we'll be doing that in Madeline Island as well. So when we when we do the course on the day, I will equip you with all those tools so that we have a sort of shared language and a shared tool set that we can work with that you can then um, use and apply to your own problems when we go when we go outside. Um, so one thing that's usually a good idea is to keep in let's move to this one for an example as an example. One thing that's usually a good idea is to keep an interesting silhouette. So a boring silhouette would be something that is like, oops. This would be if, the, if you have a few objects and you put them together like this, this might be a boring silhouette. This is a much more interesting silhouette. You can see straight away that one is more interesting than the other. So basic things like that um, is what, what I'm thinking about. And it's also sort of how I teach those things. Usually I, I reduce it to the basic elements, then I'll show you how to apply it to your own problems, and then we'll do a real thing with it. Um, so it's also, it might be new to you and open up a new whole new universe to combine elements that are that are sort of not normally combined in this way. So here you have a you have a city view, a street scene, and then here the 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 the, the top part of the tree becomes the 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 mud of the road for this car. Okay, so combining elements in that way, think of it as a as a movie poster. So you can do that on location. It just takes takes a little bit of a different mindset and a little bit of training and a little bit of a allowing yourself to do that. So. Those are the sort of things that we that I'd like to that I'm very excited to do and also very excited to share with you. And I hope you you'll find them interesting as well. Um, any any more questions? Yeah, um, can I come? Sorry, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Jane. 
<laughs> Can I come? I want to do your workshop. <laughs> well, you you'll be you'll be there. We'll we'll be talking sketching all day long. <laughs> we will. Um, you know, I, I have a question. The figures in your sketches, uh, Oliver, they seem necessary. Um, and Donna B Bogle was wondering when and how do you add them? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. So they may seem necessary. Um, they're not strictly necessary, but I really, if I wasn't teaching like how to combine these things, I was I was thinking about teaching how to draw people, which is something that I really love doing as well, because I I think the whole universe, well, not the whole universe, but every, most things that we care as humans about can be expressed by how other people interact, what they do, how they, even what they look. This is sort of something that we innately prime to um, respond to, and I'm very strongly. Sometimes I also, I also like to say drawing, especially drawing people, can be the introvert's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> So um, if you are, have trouble drawing people or painting people or sketching people and you worry about screwing up your sketch by drawing people, um, draw the people first. And then if they don't turn out and you can throw it away and do it over again, it's, it's really sad if you, if you make a very elaborate drawing and then in the end you put in some people that you don't like. Usually that, make, that can make you sad. Um, but here's another version. Here's another example of I would say that people aren't that necessary here. Yeah. But this is sort of a mashup of two two street views meshed together. Um, and I, I, I just like that, what sort of um, what emerges out of that by, by being on location, but taking a little bit of a creative license to, to rearranging things. I like to be entertained myself when I do a sketch. I want to, I want to sustain the the excitement and the happiness of actually being in the sketch. If you do a sketch and like, I don't know, five lines in, you feel, oh, this is going to be so long and this is boring. You're drawing the wrong thing. <laughs> so without cutting into Eduardo's time, I think um, maybe we should um, leave it there or answer more questions later or now. We have, um... We're gonna have plenty of time for some questions later, but well, let's move on. Oops, let's move on. Um, let's move on to um, Eduard uh, by Zick. And he is joining us from Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo Brazil. Uh, Edward, thank you for being so patient, saving the best for last, of course. <laughs> and take it away, sir. Thank Thanks, you, Oliver. Dude. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, uh, for being here. Uh, I'm really happy to be part of this incredible team. And I, I will apologize for the uh, probably the mistakes in English I'm going to make. But so I am apologize in advance. But then um, I was just amazed to see the sketches and the, the pieces of art that they, these guys show. <laughs> Just incredible. I admire them so much for a while and I looking forward to be with them in Madeline Island. I think we are going to have a lot of fun too and just to, to have more time to talk to each other and to flip through sketchbooks and it's amazing to see how, how different we are in terms of approaches and personalities, but at the same time, uh, how passionate uh, we are too uh, regarding on on drawing on sketching. So I think we we have this in common, of course, this passion, and I can I can say that I have this also this passion for trees and nature as Jane, and um, and the drawings, the imagination drawings from Nina blew me away for an entire year. So I'm I tried to do Inktober once I did. It was amazing, and it was as you said. It, your mind start working with time, yeah. and Oliver, it's amazing how you connect these things. The design of the pages. It's a book, which is a red done. So well, and I, I'm gonna talk a little bit about myself for you to get to know me a little, and then I have a small presentation. It's a quick one, and if you want to ask any questions. So I graduated as an architect 
in, in 1998. And, but since I graduated, I started working as an uh, architectural illustrator. And I worked as an illustrator for focused on, on that for many, many years uh, until I met the Urban Sketchers community. It was in 2009, I think, or 2008. And then I started developing this other side of my work, and which at the beginning worked as a kind of uh, a hobby, uh, drawing, but it was a hobby. And then I started attending to the symposiums. I went to Lisbon, and then I went to uh, seven, seven or eight other symposiums. I taught in five, six of them, and it was it was always an incredible experience. I taught in, in Santo Domingo, uh, Barcelona, Chicago, Porto, Amsterdam, and finally in Auckland. And in all these workshops, I I try to uh, to put my attention or uh, to teach about uh, the working painterly <coughs> approach, which I learned during a time I, I studied in a, in a studio here in Sao Paulo with a, a master. And I start using this approach in my urban sketching too. And it's, it's a little different from a linear approach but I always get amazed how people deal with that. And sometimes it's for the first time they're doing of something like that. But it's, it is very, I think it's very intuitive and because we change the way uh, we look at things and the way we start, start a drawing, for instance. And so I gonna talk about this approach, which is a painterly approach, which is similar to direct painting uh, with pencils, which is uh, a very easy technique. And we're going to use pencils a little differently, but it's an easy technique, much easier than I think than watercolor. And we're going to focus on trees, uh, which is kind of uh, be becoming my my special speciality. I I love I love drawing trees and uh, in in New Zealand I was I was amazed by all those trees I found in in the streets and like uh, one thing which which I think it's in interesting like Oliver do does this incredible stories and work very fast and I tend to be very uh, very quiet and I can draw for three or four hours in a row. Um, and I tend to look at things and my, my wish is to take everything I can from reality, which is, I think we, we talked about that in Auckland, right? In Oliver, it was a dinner. Yeah, with Abby, and it was, it was very nice to, uh, to realize how different we can work. At the same time, I respect a lot people who can draw fast and who can tell stories like that. So... No, same with me. It's I think it's not... Um, I think it's um, a complementary skill set. It's not a... You know, it's not one is better or worse, I think. So exactly. I, I admire your work, so... No, exactly. I think it's, uh, it's a matter of uh, personality, of... Uh, of uh, of the time and the place. Sometimes I sketch fast too, not always uh, very slowly. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a few um, works. Actually, I put here uh, some some of my uh, my work as an illustrator, uh, just for you, just to talk about a, a few of the techniques I I like. This one is uh, markers. I used markers for many, many years, and I still uh, still use them uh, for architectural illustration and also on on the spot, which is I think it's a awesome technique. This is a watercolor I did for. I work with construction companies, other architects. I don't I don't do designs anymore, just illustrations. 
This is a set of drawings for a construction company. Uh, it's it is watercolor, and I, with this work, I develop an ability to create these environments because this is a project. There is there isn't anything there, and then I have to create these gardens and and they sometimes they don't have these projects uh, uh, done at the time I am doing the illustration. So I have to figure out and create these, uh, uh, these gardens and the uh, arrangement of trees, uh, et cetera, and put the people there also. This, this is a, a two uh, very big drawings. Uh, they're um, made from Google. I look at Google and start creating these these pictures using Google Earth, and then I, I do a research of each building. So it's a very complex kind of drawing, but it's it's a two month work. Uh, so I, I think I developed this ability to draw for many for long journeys, as as Jane said as well, and a few uh, urban sketching drawings. This is a pencil drawing. Uh, with this technique and this approach I'm talking about, which is a painterly approach. So this is a drawing I did entirely on the spot. This is a shoemaker uh, that used to work nearby, and he is appearing twice here. And I spent four hours there. It was the longest sketch I ever I ever done in my life, but it worked uh, uh, because it was so fun to leave to to uh to have this guy to see this guy working and talking to his clients and to stop to pray and and to have lunch so we spend a nice time together uh, this is some ink sketches this is uh, actually it's ballpoint and i just did this sketch in ecuador it was in this last december they had a small symposium there which was really beautiful this is a some drawings using markers as well but in this approach so i didn't sketch first uh i didn't did i didn't do a, a line work i started from the masses of uh of shades of uh, either uh this bluish uh, gray or grays or other colors. So it's the same process as painting, but with this technique, they, it's very, uh, it's very uh, fast. Uh, this is a watercolor from, uh, from Rio. I did it on, on the spot as well. And another watercolor. This is a few pages of a sketchbook I did Last time I went to United States, when uh, we had the symposium in Chicago, I spent a week later on, because I love this guy, Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm a huge fan of him. So I took a trip by myself just to go sightseeing and sketching his buildings in, uh, in uh, Wisconsin and um, and anyway, this is a drawing I did in on the spot in Amazon. I went there in 2019. Uh, it was a commission because I did this work for a, 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 a company that uh, worked with, uh, um, uh, how do you say that? To cropping cropping uh, trees but it was a illegal uh company they work with every kinds of uh certification so uh, we went there and to create a reportage of their production so we were in the middle of amazon they had this uh this land uh was lent from from the state and they worked there for a few years so we were in the middle of uh, the forest and I did these sketches on location. This is a person there. So the trees are this high 
and it was incredible to skate among this incredible nature. So I learned a lot about sustainability and how people can deal with the forest and, and, uh, and at the same time uh, keeping. So it was, I, I could talk about this and I, it's, it was an amazing experience. So a few more drawings from this trip. This is the person here and this is, the trees are just incredible. So it was, I think it was the trip I realized uh, this subject is my, my passion. And this is uh, my workshop in the Madeline Island, the trees and the island landscape. So I did this, uh, this drawing and I scanned a few times. So the idea is to start working like this uh, with uh, broad masses of graphite, just positioning things and measuring distance. And, uh, and then we go further and start to creating these uh, layers of graphite. And as we go, we start putting the darkest, darker values and uh, putting details. So to sketch you do uh, little by little, and you can sketch for long journeys. Like this one, I sketched here in near Sao Paulo. I love also love these kind of subjects, which is decaying, decaying buildings. And this is also decaying how the garden was. So I was just amazed by this. And this, this one I did in, I started actually in Auckland. I saw this small square and these huge trees, they were kind of enveloping this, uh, this uh, statue here, this uh, obelisk here. So I started the drawing there and finished later on back when I was back home. So it's not a urban sketches per se, but it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of work that I enjoy uh, doing because I can relate to the place I was uh, and I can keep working without losing the freshness or the essence of the place. So this is a possibility of, uh, that I like as well. And I did this, uh, just to finish, I did these two books. One was a real sketchbook. I spent uh, uh, six travel. Uh, I did six travels to Rio, and I did uh, two hundred drawings there, and and a few few drawings back home uh, too in my studio. And this is another book. It's mm -hmm. only in Portuguese. This one it's about techniques, and that's it. This is my contacts. If you want to to ask me anything, to send me an email. Do you have any questions? There are some questions, Edward. Uh, um, the, from, from Fernanda uh, is curious about your choice of graphite. Do you mostly use mechanical pencils for these drawings? Tell us about that. Yeah, so, sometimes I start with a mechanical pencil and then I switch to pencils to from 3B up to 7B, something like this. You can start with a uh, 3B pencil, uh, but mechanical pencils are also good because you can, uh, for the soft and lighter areas, you can you can use those as well. And and typically, you know that beautiful picture um, that you did of Madeline Island, those four ones of Madeline Island and the trees. How long does a sketch like that take you? Well, that one, uh, it didn't uh, take me uh, too much time, I think, but I should say one and a half hour, probably. Yeah, because I stopped, I stopped the process to get it scanned. But uh, as I said, I can, normally I can do uh, an hour, one hour sketch easily, and but I can spend up to three, four hours, it depends on the situation when i am traveling i usually don't don't do sketches 
as long as this because I want to get to know other places. So I like to start with pencils, with these sketches and with these places that I feel that they are more special. So I, I think about finishing later. It's something that I've been kind of getting comfortable to with this possibility as well. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask again, all of you, um, one of the main questions that we have our viewers um, asking us, you know, <laughs> these workshops and, and, and your, and your, your subjects and, and, and your drawings are absolutely fabulous. Um, someone like me, a beginner, would I be able to, is, are these, are these classes, are these workshops broken down into processes? Eduardo, like if I was a beginner, where would you get me started and how would you get me started with this kind of workshop? Well, uh, at the beginning, during the morning, we are, uh, working with, uh, with a few concepts. They are very easy to, to do because uh, we are focusing on trees, so yeah. we're working on line working variety, edges variety, and shapes variety, which is uh, very uh, uh, close to this subject. And we are going to do some uh, sketches of the shapes, as I call them, see the silhouette, which is going, we're going to use a graphite bar just to try to get the whole thing, the whole tree at once and, and to look at the balance, the, and to look at the proportions between the canopy and the trunks, the trunk. And then in the afternoon, we're going outside and uh, the idea, I'm gonna do a quick demo to show this process. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I will encourage people to work in, in their own drawing. So we're going to have an entire afternoon, and I'm I'm gonna uh, encourage them to do, then to do just one drawing in the afternoon. So we're going to have uh, like two or three hours to build up the composition, and I I'm going to uh, to pass over and giving advices and feedbacks to everyone. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. And Nina, how about and how about you? How would you break it down? Um, your work was absolutely stunning. How would you break it down for beginners? Is is it is it something that these beginners would be able to come in and do these cars, these vintage cars and these boats? How do you break down the process? I think um, I usually start like uh, if you're going to draw a whole view, for instance, you might start with the big shapes, the big uh, like buildings as big boxes or stuff. And then you choose where your focus is and you start adding details, maybe people, maybe. <laughs> and you, you can do, I try to take it in steps. So you start with the easier parts and then build on. And some work fast, some work slow and you, you get there in the end, but you might not. Some may get to like five layers of watercolors and other may just get to, and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, we break it down. Yeah. Uh, Oliver, how about, how about you with your fabulous storytelling um, that you have on, you know, in, in your, in your, in your journals, how do you break that process down for beginners? Do you, do you go in, for instance, on Madeline Island, you had talked about going to this fabulous museum and, and looking into the history of Madeline Island. Um, each day, um, the students will have one day with you to go in and learn about the history and, and tell me how you, how you intend on breaking that down for a beginner, perhaps. Yes, yes, of course. Now, I think the, the advantage in that setting that, um, beginners and more experienced artists alike will have is that you can take some of the concepts. If you've been with Eduardo first and you really like that, you can transport this over in, in the essence. What I want to open people's minds to is the possibility of storytelling. So it's 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 not only about the technical skills. They are sort of almost not secondary. We'll have some technical aspects that I want to point out, how to set the focus, how to combine elements. But then some are really like um, form an opinion, you know, think, think beyond just the drawing experience. Think about why you actually, what is actually worth drawing for you? What, what makes you excited about it? Those sort of things. Um, and how do you how do you how do you 
think about annotating, uh, annotate, annotating your sketch. How could you, how could you add some writing to it or some of the labels that you have? Um, th thinking about um, how to arrange the elements to each other. You could arrange the elements irrespective of whether you draw. If you cut out things and you can still arrange elements, you know, some, some of these concepts are really very portable and irrespective of your drawing abilities. Um, having said that, if you're a beginner, your thing will just in the end maybe not look as intricate, you know, but we all have to start somewhere. And a lot of the concepts that we, I think we all share, will um, you will carry through your sketching journey with you. Yes. Jane, I want to lastly give you an option to answer and then we'll take a couple more questions and we'll wrap this up. Go ahead, Jane, tell us how you would, um, what's the process that you would bring in a beginner um, on, on, on and how would you how would you work with them on Madeline Island? I think it's worth just pointing out, all of us have taught at the Urban Sketches Symposiums and you have 15 people of, they can be from raw beginners to 40 years experience and you teach according to the level of each person there and so the beginner you help with the very basic concepts and the 40 year experience you can challenge them with something else so we're experienced in this but what i tend to do is talk through the colors and, and as i mentioned doing the triads first to be able to come up with a color scheme and understand how to mix the colors then i talk about how to actually work from life and measure to be able to translate the three-dimensional world onto a two-dimensional surface so i give techniques on that different tools to use to be able to um to be able to make corrections and so on and then how to build it up um, so it's i mean we, i think we all would meet our meet our participants and and work out the various levels there and then we we, we um we, you know we work with each person and and help them with their journey I think it's important, though, that, that people recognise that you do have to start somewhere. So, you know, it, it takes 10,000 hours to be a master of anything. Now, we've done way, 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 way more than that. You build your brush miles, you build your pencil miles, and you have to start somewhere. And so I think the important thing is with urban sketching and with sketching generally, we share, we don't compare. And I think that everyone has to... Um, if you're a beginner, you possibly haven't drawn since you were 11 or 12. You have to treat yourself as the child that you were when you probably last started sketching and be gentle. And as teachers, we will also be gentle. So we have raw beginners. They're going, we're going to just gradually build those skills. We have more experienced people. We'll give extra challenges. That's our job. Yeah. That's wonderful. And that spoken like, you know, four true teachers right there. Um, and with with the with the symposiums underneath your belt, it's it's wonderful knowing how prepared all four of you are for a workshop like this. Um, I will add that, you know, the the wonderful thing about these workshops is that everyone is going to be a everyone at Madeline Island School of the Arts will be there. We'll all be there together. So it's almost going to be a retreat for just urban sketching on Madeline Island. And what better place than to be, you know, we're not flying, you know, to Sao Paulo. Sorry, Edward, not to, not to, I mean, isn't, where is it? Where is the symposium this year? It's in Sao Paulo, right? No, in Buenos no. Aires. Oh, it's in Buenos it's Aires. A... I'm sorry. Well, well, Madeline Island's a little bit more convenient for some people to get to than Buenos Aires. So we'll call this our mini symposium, um, <laughs> but it's going to be a wonderful, um, full, full week of active um, adventures. And in the evenings, we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll be together always. Um, We'll be having fun activities in the evenings. I mean, it's just gonna get, it's just gonna be a fun, amazing uh, week away. Um, again, you know, Madeline Island School of the Arts was built around the purpose of, um, you know, basically um, making other people's lives better. And and what people will find if they join us this week that you will be with us um, in the United States is they're doing something to better their lives. Um, and the start of that is by coming and joining you guys on this fabulous week-long workshop of various different styles from all four of you. Um, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful um, time away. I want to remind everyone, um, before we let you all go, July 8th, 
to July 12th, 2024, they can sign up on our website, madelineschool.com and register there. Um, I, 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 I encourage everyone, if you're on, you know, on the edge thinking about this, this is something you don't want to miss. Um, I don't know another time that I'm going to find the four of you in one location together um, and anytime soon. So this is an opportunity not to pass up. And again, if there are any other questions, this is a recorded um, this is a recorded webinar. We are going to be emailing this to everyone who has registered, whether or not they were able to join us today or not. Um, and simply just to reach out with more questions. We tried to answer as many as we could um, during this webinar today. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to end with? Um, um, apparently the weather is perfect. Uh, <laughs> so I think to keep in mind so not too hot not too cold um so that's that's what i've heard um yeah if, if we were in australia in the middle of summer it would be just too hot to be there but apparently the weather is perfect so if you're hesitant about a summer workshop <coughs> i think you need to be <laughs> water will be warmer the water will be warmer, but the sun will be out and july is simply perfect yes absolutely the weather is going to be amazing that sounds great and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, um, all of the participants who came and took the time today to join us and listen to Edward and Nina, Oliver and Jane. Um, and thank you, um, the four of you, for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedules all over the time zone uh, for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. And we are so looking forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you thank for making you. it all happen. And uh, yes, I just want to thank add you. last thing. If there's anyone out there who um, still has a question about what they can expect from uh, my workshop, then feel free to reach out directly as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think Same that goes, goes for me. everyone. Thanks, Oliver. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And again, wonderful to see your faces. Happy New Year. And thank you so much for joining us. See you in July. Thank you. Okay. Look forward to it. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.